Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about creating buses, groups, and sends. And since then, we have upgraded to Cubase 10. And Cubase 10 adds some really powerful features and improvements over the previous versions that we had before. We were working on 9.5 at the time. So we're greeted with the same Steinberg hub. It's kind of a new dark mode now, which is a little easier on the eyes. And let's open up where we left off on our small little duo that we have been practicing on up until this point. We have basically the same arrangements. Oh, but I just thought you might want something fine. And this is our little acoustic guitar duo with some vocals, harmonies, two leads, and then some orchestra parts in the background. So let's deal with just the changes that are specific to 10 for the time being. And then we'll get to the new stuff as we go because it adds a ton of newly designed workflow features, um, some dramatic improvements to things like Vary Audio. The new Vocal Align feature makes uh, track stacking and doubling so much easier. Uh, there's a completely redesigned channel strip with visual feedback of each of the modules. Things like Groove Agent adds a ton of new features and sounds. Um, Mix Console finally got snapshots uh, up here, which is so cool. Uh, that allows you to basically create and recall completely alternate mixes with a mouse click uh, and a bunch of other stuff. And we'll get to all of it as we go. But for the time being, let's work on just the things that we uh, basically changed. So here we leave off in the left-hand column over here on this side. We used to have a three-tab box that said visibility zone and history up here at the top. Now this box adds two more tabs. So we still have channel and zones, but we also have visibility, history, and snapshots here at the top. So we still have the same features. We just have a few additional things we can use now as well. So for example, when we left off on our other project, we had all of our buses and sends over here on the right-hand side. We had all of our tracks over here on the left-hand side. Up here in the visibility tab, we used to have a column of two buttons left or right that we could choose to either place them in the left hand zone over here or in the right hand zone over here. We now have one additional column of little dots here. And this is gonna allow us, for example, let's take our guitar verb that we created in the last video. And if we move it here in the center, it goes back to being snapped with all of our tracks like we showed before. And we have the third and additional zone, which creates a brand new zone over here on the left-hand side. So for example, you could make this left-hand side zone where all your tracks lived. The middle zone now could be, for example, maybe just all of your effects sends, and the right-hand zone could simply be all your buses and your master. So this is completely up to you as to how you wanna arrange this or how you wanna set your own bus architecture. It just gives you a few more options, still operates exactly the same, but it gives you a few more choices. For the time being, we're still gonna have all of our tracks over here on the left-hand side, and we're gonna have all of our buses, sends, and master on the right-hand side, just to keep things fairly simplified. A few other changes that have happened, not dramatically, but for example, when you right-click on a channel to create a group or a send, the dialog box opens up and you can see the same choices if you choose one of these Instead of having a long horizontal box like we did before, those same set of choices are basically just now in a little easier to see box. This is also easier, for example, if you have a high res screen, so the fonts are a bit clearer to see, but all the same choices are still here. You can name the track, for example, create it inside and out of a folder. You can assign it to where it's going to go. The configuration can still be stereo or mono and you can choose the effect that you're gonna put on that track from the drop-down menu. So all those things are still the same, they're just in a slightly different shape box. A Couple of other changes up on top that you might wanna be aware of as well. Up here in our snapshots window, this is a really super powerful feature. We finally got mixed snapshots. And what this does is it allows us to create completely different mixed configurations literally at the click of a button. So we click the little camera icon up here in the upper left-hand corner, this creates a new mixed snapshot of our current console. This can be renamed simply by double-clicking. We'll call this Mix 1. And then, for example, we make our mix changes down here. And these can be all kinds of different changes and anything that applies to the mix console. So we make our adjustments, and then we hit that again, and we have our snapshot for, we're gonna rename this one Mix 2. 
To simply recall those, we click here to the down arrow and we have recall mix one. It'll ask us to confirm, we say yes, and then we are back to our original mix configuration. Super powerful. It's a good thing that they ask you to confirm that if it was just deletable by clicking on it, I think that probably would be a bad thing. Um, a real quick tour up here. So we have the snapshot window up here. The configuration buttons are still the same. Visibility agents still work the same as they did before. They're just controlled down here by the channel and zones tab on the bottom. So for example, if you wanted to see all your input channels at a glance, you would simply click and enable them just like you did before. And we would see all those across the bottom, including the one I'm using to record this video with. You can see the meters over here dancing around. Uh, so those are basically in the same place. You just have quite a bit more control over them and lots of stuff at a glance. And the addition of the extra column of the zones down here for the track and bus view. All right, up at the top, we have our transport controls, basically the same. Uh, the same with all of our states. And we have a couple of new features up here, which are very cool. The option click for this insert button right here will project-wide instantaneously deactivate all of our inserts. So if you have a huge project, tons of channels, and all kinds of VSTs in your inserts, you can instantly deactivate everything with one click simply by option clicking the insert button up here. Same thing is true with the EQs. So any of the EQs that you might be using in your project here, for example, we could go up here, option click and deactivate all of them just with one click, super powerful. Same thing is true with the channel strip itself. So on the channel strip, if you're using a bunch of channel strip configurations, you can option click and that will deactivate all of them as well. And then the last option here is send. So you can deactivate and reactivate all your sends with just an option click. Great additions uh, to your workflow. We've been using this stuff around the clock since it's come out and uh, really, really powerful stuff. We can suspend all the channel linking. We can use the absolute mode, which is new, and that just forces all the parameters to the same value. We'll get into all this stuff more as we go. Let's look at some of the new visual improvements to the channel strip interface. Been some pretty big updates. So for example, if you choose the standard tube compressor, you now actually have a real graphic so you can visualize those as they change. And this is a really important thing, I think, because when you start to work, especially if you're working quickly, you need at a glance to be able to identify the effects you're using. And that really helps you to make kind of a mental note of what it is you're actually doing in your mix. So these are great improvements. We'll get into more as we go. But just wanted to give you a quick overview of the things that have changed in Cubase 10. Super powerful. You're going to love it. We have. So in the next video, we're going to get on to mixing our little duo project here. And we're going to put all these brand new features to work.